that moment, that thought, that occurrence that changed everything. For every small business owner in the room, we've all had that ripple effect, that one small transformative occurrence that changed our lives. It is with great honor that I welcome to the stage two of Chattanooga's favorite entrepreneurs and powerhouses. First, we have Miss Tiffany Paulden Banks. Tiffany is the founder of Chattanooga's most celebrated startup, Little Mama's Ch Chicago Style Hoagies. She's been nominated for the Startup of the Year, winning Best New Business of the Year, nominated for Best Sandwich Shop, and has been featured in several publications for the larger in life brand that she created here in Chattanooga. Her journey as an entrepreneur began when she started Redberry Events, a full service wedding planning firm in 2013. With nearly a decade of entrepreneurial experience, she is now able to use her knowledge to inspire other female entrepreneurs through mentoring and coaching. When she's not working, she loves to travel, eat and drink well, and spend quality time with family and friends. Another round of applause for Tiffany Paul and Banks. Our next panelist, we have Kenyatta Ashford. Doesn't that name carry some weight? Raised in Algiers neighborhood of New Orleans, one of seven siblings, Kenyatta Ashford found his love for food at a young age over lingering family meals hosted by his mother and Parun. Never one to follow a normal path, Kenyatta became a high school teacher. After playing basketball at Lee University, he began his coaching career and spent summer sessions helping in a catering kitchen which awoke his childhood passion for the taste of home. Led by the memories and the taste of his childhood and constant commitment to excellence, Kenyatta was accepted into the Culinary Institute of America, where he built technical expertise and interest in the food ways of his ancestry. Like much of the hospitality industry, Kenyatta's role was furloughed early during the pandemic leaving him with a sound set of skills, but also a family to feed. Within weeks, Kenyatta created his concept of Neutral Ground that was set up in Chattanooga's Proof Bar and Incubator. Guys, run applause for Kenyatta Ashford. <laughs> All right, first question, Miss Tiffany. What is the moment in your career that you can isolate that started the wave for you? Oh, that's such a great question. I remember working in corporate America starting in about 2008. And I knew that I loved helping people, but I knew that being a financial aid director was not my passion. And there were parts of me when I realized that I wasn't happy, I wasn't feeling fulfilled, and so I knew that I needed to be of service to other people. And I think that I felt like I was never enough for my managers. You're not doing this and you're not doing that. And so I remember I came home after I got married and I told my husband, I was like, you know what? I wanna start my own wedding planning business. And I know he was like, you are crazy. <laughs> and I'm like, I wanna do it. And so once I have my mind set on something, I'm like, it's go time. So I remember sitting in my office at work and I'm like, okay, I need a website and I need this and I need that. And I called my mom because I was terrified. And I remember her saying this and she's like, just put it out there, just let the world see it and somebody will book you and from that point you'll be fine. And I'm like, who is gonna book me for a wedding and I've never done this before? 
And so it was just, I made up my mind. I got the okay from my husband. And I was like, I'm leaving this job. And I left my job. I remember that day he took me to breakfast after I gave them my notice. And from that point, I never looked back. I knew that I was destined to be in this world to be something great and to be of service to other people. And so when I walked out of that office building, from that day forward, I knew that that was it. And so I think that is where things got started. And I booked my first client, and I never looked back. Yeah. Kenyatta, how has mentorship defined your success? Well, as everybody in the room knows, I'm a chef. <laughs> And um, so mentorship is a big part of uh, Shepton. Um, so I began my career um, when I was teaching. During the summers, I would go and work in kitchens here in Chattanooga. And uh, there are two gentlemen that, that here, or they're here in Chattanooga. One is deceased now, who were pretty impactful in that, in that journey of me starting my career as a chef. Uh, one's name is uh, Neville Fors For uh, Forsythe, and the other gentleman, is, uh, his name is Lamont Johnson. And I would spend summers, my summer breaks from teaching, uh, working in those kitchens. And uh, I would you know, do odd tasks because I had never worked in a professional kitchen before and everything. And uh, I really wanted to, uh, it, it kind of gave me the courage to pursue it further. So uh, one evening I was spending some time with uh, Chef Neville at a restaurant that uh, is no longer in East Brainerd that he worked at at the time. And, uh, he mentioned uh, his alma mater, which was the Culinary Institute of America, and uh, told me that I should apply to, to go to culinary school there. You know, that's one, one ripple, as, as Chloe did in, the, in her uh, TED Talk. Uh, so I decided to go, go to school there and um, graduated, and I decided to extern uh, before I graduated at a restaurant in New Orleans called Restaurant August. And I worked for this gentleman named John Besh. Uh, so this was a big one for me because uh, he, this gentleman didn't know who I was. He, I told him my story I, from New Orleans, you know, I, I was an, I'm an inspiring chef, I want to do this, I want to do that and whatnot and everything. So uh, unbeknownst to me, uh, behind the scenes, you know, he uh, tried to do a lot of things to make, make my, my path easy. Uh, so after my externship, was over, uh, my last day there, I went into his office and we had a conversation and he offered me a job to come back and work for him. Um, and I came back to work for him as, as a sous chef uh, at one of his other restaurants, which is huge. Uh, not having a, a whole lot of experience, but he knew and saw potential in me that you know most people say that they didn't see themselves, but I, honestly I didn't see it myself at the time because I didn't feel, feel like I, I knew enough, I didn't have a, enough experience at the time. But um, Later on, I began to realize the reason why he was doing it, because one of the things that he did, you know, after I took the job as a sous chef there at Luke, is he, be he began a foundation called the John Besh Foundation that began to send uh, uh, students of color to culinary school uh, full, on a full ride, um, all expenses paid, uh, which is huge, you know, because if you think about the culinary profession, once you get a degree or if you don't get a degree and you start working in a kitchen, um, de de depending on where you work, you know, you may get a job making 10 bucks an hour. Uh, and on top of that, you have student loan debt from going to culinary school and whatnot, and it's, it's, it's pretty tough, you know. So it, it, um, it doesn't allow you to, to uh, think about furthering your career and being creative and, and things of that nature and most people either get out of the profession really early or they take jobs working in corporate restaurants. So um, that is uh, part of my ripple and how it's affected me. I love that. And truly, um, Kenyatta, it's, it's, it's funny to hear you say that the skill set wasn't there because everyone here knows how incredibly talented you are. Um, and Tiffany, um, similar, I definitely resonate with your story, that moment in the office where you feel like this no longer serves me. I am no longer getting fulfilled by this position, and it's scary. The what next is scary. 
And I don't think we talk about how the ripple can be nerve wracking. You know, you want to run away from said ripple. Well, thank you both. Tiffany, what advice would you give young Tiffany right now? Ooh, okay. I would tell young Tiffany to dream big because the world is yours. I would tell her to have grace, allow yourself to make mistakes. Um, and I think that I would also say to allow yourself to celebrate all of your wins, big or small. Um, that is so important. And that life is truly, it's a journey. It is not a marathon. You know, I wanted everything so fast, but I feel like I get to enjoy it more now. Like every time I feel like I get knocked down, then I get back up and I dust myself off and I appreciate that so much more now. So I wish I could have told, you know, the big, the really, really big dreamer, 21 year old Tiffany that, um, but that's what I would, I would tell myself. Grace, 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 grace. Kenyatta, same question. Um, legacy is, in, is important for me. Um, and mentorship is, is a big part of that. You know, as I you know, stated before, you know, I wouldn't be in the place I am in my career if I hadn't had those you know, few people early on in my career you know, to uh, help, uh, help me navigate that path. Um, one of the things uh, Chef Besh did for me too is when I left New Orleans, you know, he made a phone call for me and uh, allowed me to get a, a job at a really, really great restaurant uh, here in the state of Tennessee. You know, and I, I got an opportunity to work at you know, uh, a related chateau property in East, East, East Tennessee called Blackberry Farm. And um, so one thing kind of begot, begets another and everything. So by, by being able to build a resume and whatnot, it, allows, it allowed me to get other jobs and other positions. You know. You know, therefore, you know, allowing me to be put myself in a, a better position each time, um, and the impact I would like to be able to leave for young, inspiring chefs in this community is to be able to you know pay it forward in the same way that it was paid forward to me. Uh, and one of the ways that I've done that is through an initiative that uh, we started um, called Four Courses and, and I'll, I'll tell you tell you more about that, but. Um, uh, Four Courses and is uh, a dinner series that um, started, you know, a little bit before the pandemic um, in 2018, and it's a dinner series that brings uh, celebrity chefs of color to Chattanooga. Uh, we just had a dinner in uh, sep September, and we had uh, uh, Chef Ricky Moore, who's a James Bitter Award-winning chef, uh, another chef named Serene Bay and Bay. And we had a dinner to raise money for some local culinary arts programs here in Chattanooga. And the reason why we want to raise money for those culinary arts programs is because they're underfunded. <laughs> you know, if you knew the expense of uh, what, it would, uh, what it costs to start a restaurant or to equip a kitchen to teach, to run a restaurant, or, or, or also to uh, teach young people how to cook, to have stations, to have pots and pans and equipment and whatnot, um, it's expensive. You know, so to be able to provide opportunities and have funds to provide opportunities for those young students, those inspiring culinarians, is, is really important to me and meaningful because I want to leave the culinary arts world or the food scene here in Chattanooga better than it, than it is when I found it. What we know, guys, is that no ripple is too small. One occurrence, whether it's mentorship or that time where you realize, I need to do something else, it truly changes lives. Both of our guests on stage have had national attention for their businesses and their talent. Tiffany, my question's for you. How have you used your notoriety to start a ripple for others? Oh, Brianna, the questions are so good. <laughs> You know, I, I, I don't know if I think about it like that. Um, I just know how important it is 
for me to always lead by example. I know that there is some other little brown girl that is looking to me as an example. And so my focus is always being a leader and leading the way for the next little Tiffany. Um, and so I think that that is, I think that we've done a really great job when, when creating Little Mamas. It was more than just a restaurant. It was giving people hope and spreading love. So I think that that is, that's my focus. I would say, I think about the time that I knew I had the ability to enhance the human experience. Um, I was raised by a single mother, a strong woman, the hardest working person that I know. And when I was about 12 years old, my mother made it very clear it was time for me to get in the kitchen. And as a matter of fact, it became an expectation. So when I would get off the school bus, I didn't go outside to play with my friends right away. Y'all can already guess where I was at, the kitchen. But that is where I discovered my imagination. And that is where I discovered the ability to be able to provide an experience for others through something that I created. And so I always say, like, I knew I had the sauce, right? When I mastered this baked barbecue chicken and mashed potatoes that my mom always used to make, and her, her voice or, and reason of confidence, it just made me know that I was gonna be cooking dinner from now on. But at that point, my passion, it was ignited. And you know, my love for cooking, it gave me confidence. And that was the confidence that led me to believe if I made my mom happy with, the, with my cooking, then I could do absolutely anything. Whether that was creating a recipe, starting a new business. My visionary mindset was cultivated in the kitchen. And so I, I just feel so grateful and so honored to have surrounded myself by amazing people who have led me into the direction of what I feel is the right direction. Um, the, the support has just been phenomenal. And so my biggest thing that I tell everybody is to dream big. There is no dream or ambition that is too big. I started making hoagie jaw in my kitchen at home. I was like pulling up to Chick-fil-A, okay? <laughs> Um, and I had a whole nother business. So I, I tell people is that whatever it is that you set your mind to do, you can do it. You stay focused. You surround yourself by people who are there to love on you and support you through the good and the bad times. And so for me, that is what has allowed me to be a successful entrepreneur. So I tell any person that is considering starting a business or you're in the middle of turmoil in your business, keep going, keep going. You don't stop, you don't give up, it gets hard. There are lots of tears that are involved, but the reward on the other side is so very worth it. And so I would say the secret sauce to being a visionary entrepreneur, guys, is a lot of imagination sprinkled with some inspiration and then toss with your ability to execute on that. So dream big, go make it happen, and go get what's yours. Chef Kenyatta, same question. How have you used your notoriety to begin the ripple for others? Um, one of the things that I, I try to live by is to, to, to be 
the best example I can as a, as a father and as a human being for, for my kids. And uh, one of the ways I try to do that is by encouraging them and doing for myself, you know, to, to live out my wildest dream. And uh, one of the other things is too, uh, as I mentioned before, is uh, for other people uh, with four courses, you know, we raised about $35,000 through the five events that we've held here in Chattanooga from, from 2018 or 2019 until just uh, past September for you know, some of the local high school culinary arts programs. Um, and the other, the other thing is you know, to, to, to live out my passion and, li and live, it out, live out loud um, by you know, doing things that, that, that terrify me, you know, like being on the stage right now. <laughs> um, doing things uh, that, that push me you know, beyond my comfort zone. Um, and, you know, and just you know, try, trying to push the envelope. You know, one of the, one of the ways we're doing that, I'm doing that, is by, you know, talking out loud about you no know, food of my heritage, uh, of, the Af of the African diaspora. You know, um, that uh, that's become a real trendy thing now. You know, uh, you no know, black chefs are hot now. You know, they, they are. You know, it's, it's a thing. You know, you got you know you got you know lots of black chefs who are winning James Wood Awards, are getting recognized, and whatnot and stuff. You know, they're they're being courted for other things and stuff, you know, and uh, I want to do that here in Chattanooga, you know, by establishing, establishing neutral grounds of brick and mortar and also using my brick and mortar to also continue to, you know, mentor young chefs and raise money for young chefs, you know, through uh, our Four Courses Initiative and everything. And also uh, doing something different with food than you might find uh, is the norm here in Chattanooga. You know, everybody does the same thing. You know, um, and the, the world is pretty big, you know, and food is, is really diverse. And w one of the things that we all have in common is we, we, all, we all have to eat. And in my, in my you know, we, we, no matter what culture you come from, no matter, you know, what color you are or whatnot and stuff, you know, we all eat. And uh, it might as well be delicious. It might as well be interesting. And why not, you know, use food to start a conversation, bring people to the table to try to uh, solve some ills that we uh, routine, routinely deal with in our society. Uh, so I, you know, would like to continue to do that and continue to be a voice uh, uh, that, that brings those things to people's attention. Now, Chef Kenyatta, a little birdie told me that you're having an, an event soon. For those in the crowd that haven't tried Neutral Grounds food, where can they patron in the near future? Uh, so if you want to follow us on our social media channels, you can go to Facebook, Instagram, uh, Neutral Ground Chat on either platform. And there you will also find frequent updates about you know, where we will be popping up. You know, we spent two years in the incubator here in Chattanooga at Proof, and we're, we're no longer there. Uh, we opened on Juneteenth of 2020, and we closed, uh, closed our term there in Juneteenth of 2022. You know, it's uh, really cool, you know, I always mention that and everything, that I opened a restaurant on, on Juneteenth as a, as a black entrepreneur, you know, uh, at such a tumultuous time in, in our country and everything. So, um, and we're having a pop-up tomorrow, though, at the Chattery uh, from 5 to 8 p.m. and we're selling gumbo, okay? Uh, so you know, gumbo, for, uh, gumbo is, a, is a national dish of Louisiana and uh, I'm, I'm uh, partial to the way I make gumbo just like everybody, everybody, everybody has their own way of making gumbo and everybody thinks theirs is, 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 is the best version of everything but I encourage you guys to come and see us you know, because uh, the, the, the batch of gumbo that we, that we made uh, this week is going to be delicious. So you should come try some. Yeah. Tiffany, I'm going to put you on the spot. Is there an exclusive TEDx Chattanooga 2022 announcement that we can hear about Unmatched? Oh, Brianna. Okay, so... 
Okay, Brianna. <laughs> so for those of you that are not aware, last year I hosted a symposium um, for female entrepreneurs, and it was, excuse my language, kick ass, okay? <laughs> I, listen, um, Pinky Cola Slutty Vegan CEO is my biggest inspiration, and so I called my best friend and I'm like, I wanna get Pinky Cola to be the keynote speaker. She's like, how the hell are we gonna do that, Tiff? I'm like, girl, we'll figure it out. So anyways, we had Pinky Cole come down. We had this intimate event with uh, like 20 female entrepreneurs, and it was life changing. So what we are going to be working on is unmatched for the spring of 2023. But I would love if you guys would follow me on Instagram to follow my wild and crazy ride of entrepreneurship at I am, so it's I am, Tiff, T-I-F-F, -F, and everyone gets this wrong. It's Charlay, which is my middle name. So that's C-H-A-R-L-E-A. -E I am Tip Charlay. Come along for this crazy ride with me. And we just have some amazing things that are, that are coming about. Thank you for putting me on the spot, Brianna. <laughs> well, guys, round of applause for these two, right?